So there is a double angle identity for tangent. Um, it's given as tangent of 2a is equal to 2 tangent of a over 1 minus tangent squared. All right. And you could prove that easy enough using the angle sum identities for tangent if you know that one. That is the left-hand side would equal tangent of 2a, which would then equal, you're going to treat this as tangent of a plus a, like so, for which then you're going to get tangent of a plus tangent of a. Usually it's tangent of a plus tangent of b, but both angles are the same here. Then in the bottom, you get one minus tangent of a, tangent of a. Again, the more general setting, the denominator looks like one minus tangent a, tangent a. And this then simplifies to be two tangent of a over one minus tangent squared of a, which is then the right-hand side. So you get that easy enough. But admittedly, we're not going to use tangent of 2a very often, right? Uh, because really, the identity you really want to be thinking of, tangent of a, is equal to, of course, sine of 2a, excuse me, 2a, and then cosine of 2a. If you can compute, if you can compute tangent of, excuse me, if you compute sine of 2a and cosine of 2a, you can get tangent, you can get all the other identities as well, secant of 2a, cosecant of 2a, cotangent of 2a. That's gonna be the basic idea for which you could expand the numerators here. You're gonna get two sine of a, cosine of a, all over cosine squared a, minus sine squared a, something like this. Now, it's not as obvious that these things are equal to each other. Um, how do you prove something like that? Well, again, it's it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, we could times the top and bottom by various things. We, we could prove it. Basically, what we have to do is we have to times uh, the top by one over cosine squared and one over cosine squared. If we do that, um, in the numerator, you see that there's gonna be a cosine that cancels out. Then you're left with a cosine in the numerator. So you end up with two sine a over cosine a. That's great because that's a tangent. Then in the denominator, you'll distribute this thing. Cosine squared over cosine squared is going to give you a one. And then you get sine squared over cosine squared. Whoops, my handwriting's getting a little sloppy there. Sorry about that. Cosine squared a, for which then that gives you two tangent a over one minus the tangent squared a. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that when it comes to uh, double angle identities of tangents or other of the trigonometric functions, you're probably good enough with just using the double angles for sine and cosine uh, because any identity you could come up with involving them is really not that far afield from just using the identities of sine and cosine as well. So when it comes to proving trigonometric identities involving double angles, you're probably good enough with just double angle sine, double angle cosine. So let's prove a trigonometric identity exactly in that format. Notice we have a cosine of 2a, we have a sine of 2a, and then we just have a tangent, excuse me, cosine and sine of 2 theta, and just a tangent theta on the left-hand side. So I'm going to start with the right-hand side because it looks a whole lot more complicated than the left-hand side. So that's given us 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over sine of 2 theta. So you'll notice that the right-hand side involves double angles, but the left-hand side does not. So we have to use the double angle identity to convert from the angle 2 theta to the angle theta. Now, when it comes to cosine, there's a couple options. So I'm going to hesitate to do that one. On the, for sine of 2 theta, there's basically one option. You're going to do 2 sine theta, cosine theta, like so. And so for the top, you're going to get 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. What are your options again? Remember, this, this, is the, this is both a blessing and a curse when it comes to double angle cosine. So you have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Uh, you get two, two cosine squared theta minus one, and you get one minus two sine squared theta, like so. So how are we gonna end up with a tangent here in the end? Well, if you're not sure, it might make sense to kind of work backward on this one. So that is, if we start with the left-hand side, this is equal to tangent. And recognizing that, you know, we started off with a quotient here, um, which has some stuff. We might write cosine, excuse me, tangent as a quotient. So we end up with a sine theta with a cosine theta on the bottom. So we want sine on the top. We want cosine on the bottom, which we do have a cosine on the bottom already. Notice you have a cosine theta right there. And there is a sine on the bottom. That's okay. But in the numerator, we need to have some type of sine 
Um, and that kind of leads me to think that for the cosine of 2 theta, I want to use 1 minus 2 sine squared. Notice that it involves sines, right? So does this one. This one has a sine and a cosine, but how do you get rid of the cosine? E, it's a little bit scary. 1 minus 2 sine squared only has a sine. Also, notice that I need to end up with just a sine. I don't need a difference of anything, which since there's a 1 minus here, that might cancel with the 1 that's right here. And so that's the form of 2, our cosine of 2 theta we want to use. We want to use... 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. That's going to be the one that seems most productive here. So then you get the 1. Well, let's distribute this negative sign next. So we end up with 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared theta over 2 sine theta. And now we can start to see how things are going to unravel here. You get 1 minus 1. They cancel each other out. We're next going to get a 2 sine squared theta over 2 sine theta, cosine theta, like so. Um, in which case then the 2's cancel, one of the sines cancel, and we're left with sine over cosine, thus proving the trigonometric identity we were looking for. And so then the moral of the story here is when you're trying to prove trigonometric identities with uh, double angles, mostly just focus on sine and cosine, they'll probably be good enough. And when it comes to cosine, you have some options, and so you want to use the option that seems to best serve you. Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing on which one the option to use because there's multiple ones, but look at your goal, look at where you're trying to get to, and then use that to help you decide what you're going to do, and then you can prove these trigonometric identities.